Well, hey everybody, and welcome to another Perry's Inside Scoop. It is opening week of the Syracuse football season. Matt Parker, the coach, Dino Babers. And coach, uh, at this time of the season, doesn't mean we have to put the Perry's away that we've had uh, all summer long. There's still time for Perry's uh, headed into the fall, but obviously the focus is ramped up here as training camp is over, school has begun, and the Colgate Raiders come to town this weekend. Yeah, there's action all around campus, and there, it's their giant buzz around here, and uh, it's autumn, and it's time for football again. Sure. Why don't we address your digs here? This is all part of the, the signs of progress. You're in kind of a temporary office at the moment, all of the, the football staff uh, with the building out of the Lally Complex toward the street. The old uh, football complex uh, being renovated at the time being, so you guys are uh, spread hither and yon at the moment. Yeah, you know, we're going to adjust and improvise and do the things we need to do. We're spread out over about three different spaces on campus, but uh, we get together every once in a while. It's uh, shown how uh, creative you've got to be and how much of a football staff there is and how people have to work together just logistically to, uh, to pull all of this off. But with the Ensley Center and uh, folks uh, having offices there and just kind of doing the day-to-day -day work of making sure your uh, players are where they need to be and at the, preparing for the game, that there's a lot that goes into it, of course. Communication's always the key when you're going to run something this big. Yeah, so we always talk about that, right? Oh, so you wanted to be a football coach. You know, this has nothing to do with moving around the, the, uh, the X's and O's at the moment. No, you know, it's, it's all part of the thing. It's going to be really, really nice once it's finished, and we need to put up with a little bit of, you know, if we want to have an, enjoy that uh, castle that's being built at the end. Sure. Well, 40 years in coaching for you, and so you've seen a little bit of everything and, and uh, dealing with uh, the 2023 issues at the moment. It, your tenure here, which is now into your eighth year as head coach, started with Colgate coming in. I wonder if that occasion uh, gives you a moment for reflection or if you ever really take the time to say, hey, this is where we were in 2016 and 2018 and now in 2023. You know, I think the biggest thing about uh, the take back on 2016 is, is just trying to get the culture started and uh, the change over from the old regime into what we were trying to bring in and, and not necessarily being caught up in, in winning and losing, but just trying to get that culture cemented so that we could, uh, you know, recruit to what we wanted to bring in here to change what was going on. We'll talk in this uh, piece this week about, you know, who's where and the depth chart. And I know that's all fluid over the, the course of the season. But then within the prism of what you just said, culture, you know, were you pleased to see kind of how it shook out? We, we know there's transfers out, transfers in. But when you look at it on paper here at the end, you're, you're kind of, hey, these are people that have been in the, the program by and large. And there are some exceptions, of course, but you've got your material here. You know, for the most part, we do. You know, obviously, you know, we, with the transfer portal and name, image, and likeness, there's been a lot of uh, transition yeah. in college football, and we're part of that. Any, any good football team is going to be part of that transition as far as a positive and a negative. But you hope that your, your solid guys, your core guys, that carry their cult your culture with them is going to be able to help not only themselves, but the new guys when they come in to move us in the right direction. You know, this is the week in pro football where they talk about cutting down to the 53. You know, they may have had 90 in, in training camp, but did you make the legitimate roster of the 53? You just use the word core, and in college football that still might be 50, 60 individuals. Where would you rate right now your feeling of, of the talent, the, the ability of that core group? I think our top guys are as good as anybody. You know, it's the same dance. You, if you you can have injuries, but you got to have injuries at the right position. If you have injuries at the wrong position, uh, you could be in some trouble because your core is stronger in some areas than in others. Training camp, uh, you had a couple different things to to work your way through here. The offseason uh, coaching changes, which were implemented in, in many cases at the end of last season, because you had the the bowl game and, and working into some of that. You had a quarterback who sat out the spring in, in Garrett Schrader and working his way through uh, uh, surgery and rehab. He says he feels uh, great and is excited about it. Uh, to what extent was that really a, a goal of, of uh, your fall camp to kind of put these new pieces in and, and make sure that everybody was ready to go? It was a big part of it. You know, we wanted to obviously, um, Garrett has worked with the coach back before, but having them off during the spring and having Semi become a, a player coach, coach player, where he's actually in the meetings and he's on the field helping the young men coach, but uh, he couldn't play. I think there was some growth there, getting him back with the team in the fall. And uh, as the doctor said, he should be the same or better. And uh, when you roll the dice of getting somebody better than what Gary Schrader was for us last year, when healthy, 
uh, you know, I'll roll the dice for that. Sure, that's the way you phrased it uh, back in the spring, and of course time will tell in terms of how effective he is uh, on the field. Colgate is the opener Saturday at uh, 4 o'clock. Uh, quickly on the offense, what has you most excited there, whether it is a, a returner, we all know about the, the pitch and catch combo of Schrader to Aronde Gadsden, LaQuint Allen uh, a couple weeks late in starting training camp, but people are excited for him. Uh, what has you uh, jazzed up about what you can do there? I think the biggest thing is some of the new pieces in the throwing game. Uh, I think LaQuint's going to be better in the running game than what people think. I also believe that the running game is not going to be one running back. I think it's going to be a core of running backs. They're going to get the work done. And whether they can all uh, mount up to what Sean Tucker's done, you know, making the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and all that other kind of stuff, I don't know about that. But I think overall, from a run-pass standpoint, I think we'll be as good as we were last year. And then we'll have to see how the offensive line comes along. Sure, and there are obviously some pieces there. And as you mentioned, there will be some flux in that, right? I know when you think of offensive line, you don't think of five. You probably think of about eight. You're absolutely correct. That's the number that's in my head. And if we can get to eight, we'll be great. <laughs> well, eight you're, is great. you're not one to, uh, <laughs> to miss a rhyme or, or a one-liner. On the, the defensive side, one of the things that, that struck me uh, during a, a training camp is the idea that you, you, know, you have a leader, you have experience, at least one person, at every level, and that's important when you think about uh, Caleb Okuchuku, Justin Barron, whoever it may be, uh, deeper back, Marlo Wax, the, the back end. When you do now bring in some new pieces, they have a go-to uh, coach within their group. There's no doubt about that. I think that's great. As a fan, that whole statement, I think, is true. You nailed it right on the head. Uh, you got Caleb up front. You got Marlo in the middle. You got Justin in the back along with Isaiah Zeke. And I think that those new guys have someone they can go to and say, hey, this is how you need to do it. Or if you do it that way, you're going to be on your own. That's not how we do things. Here. Yeah, you and Rocky Long have been friends for decades. Do you have an observation now that you're in the same building, you're on the same turf? Uh, he's so calm. He's obviously been there, done that in, in terms of what we've seen so far in a, in a practice environment. Uh, what's your sense of his handle on, on all of this and, and how we might see it on the field? You know, first of all, I, you know, Rocky and I have never worked together. We have never worked together. Now, I've hired a lot of people that he's trained, and they're all good coaches, and I've always respected his work. I've always seen his work from afar and always respected it. But to get to the answer of your question, you know, I, I just think you're play, you're, we've got one of the best guys in, in college football when it comes to defense. And uh, he can only do so much with what we have, but he's going to be able to do all that he can with what we've got. And uh, I'm excited to see what the season is going to unfold and how it's going to play out on that side of the ball because I think we got an opportunity to be really good. And quickly as we close here, we'll turn our attention toward the specifics of the weekend with Colgate uh, coming in. This is a very proud program. This is our neighbor uh, over in, in Hamilton. What do you get? You know, we can talk more in the nitty-gritty when we get uh, a little closer to the game. We've got a dual-threat quarterback here in Michael Brescia. Uh, defensive-oriented uh, kind of approach uh, in a lot of ways. What, what do you expect out of the Raiders? I expect a heck of a football game. Anytime you've got a mobile quarterback and a quarterback that's a tough guy, and that's what that quarterback is. He's a tough individual. You know, those guys are going to rally and they're going to play behind that guy. They have a lot of experience on offense and defense. So this is not their first rodeo. Last year they were playing Stanford. They played division teams before that. They've been out in tough venues to play before. So they're not going to be overwhelmed by this. And uh, it's close to home. And, uh, you know, it, it's one of those games where I know if I was on the other side, you know, I'd be willing to break a leg for this game. Sure. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people out there playing their hearts out. Uh, last thing would just be kind of a, a fan experience type thing. Coaches, uh, people are getting themselves uh, ready and organized here for the first five games are at home. Uh, what would you think of the news? The, the student uh, season passes sold out, obviously, Students can still find a way in, and, and tickets are available to them, but uh, that corner of the ballpark uh, should be pretty frenzy. Well, I lost my voice talking to the <laughs> freshman class in the, in, in the Dome, and I had two situations where I got to speak to the freshman class. But I, I'm, the last three years, yeah, the last, they have been amazing coming into that Dome as freshmen, and I keep telling them that, hey, the, you know, you're going to have to up the last class. The last class was really good, but every class has, has met the mark, has hit the mark. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with this 2023 class because 2022 was really good. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Well, a <laughs> lot of uh, details still to go. The freshmen, they're the class of... I'm 
I'm talking about the year that's coming <laughs> yeah. in. I'm not no, going know, back. It, you know, I'm talking about just you know. thinking about it makes us I mean, I makes us feel old. That's a, that is a <laughs> long time off. At least it, it feels that way. And for all fans, regardless of age, get your uh, smartphone out and uh, make sure you update the uh, QS Athletics app on there. Lots of uh, doors that that opens for you uh, come game day in the dome. Looking forward to seeing everybody there. And thanks for Coach Babers joining us again for the first of the season's Perry's Inside Scoop, brought to you by Perry's, proudly made in New York.